Okay, great story number two, um, Chris Pascal, uh, son of Rob and Eileen Pascal. Eileen is on the Young Life Committee. Rob is a Young Life or a wildlife leader for Pittman Wildlife Group. Um, Chris is had just finished his eighth grade year. Great kid. Uh, we love him to death. He's got more personality, uh, you know, than most kids his age. Uh, a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, he he was crossing the street, got hit by a car, um, pretty much took him right out of his shoes. He got hit so hard. Uh, went into a coma, uh, broke his femur, his shoulder bone, some, some bone in his shoulder, uh, had significant head trauma. Um, doctors said at one point that uh, he was beyond surgical repair, that the brain damage was just too severe. So, uh, you know, the Young Life family, as well as the, um, the True North Church family, rallied around the Pascals, uh, visited them in the hospital, prayed for them. Uh, God just really has met them at their point of need. You know, there, you know, here we are two, tomorrow's two month, uh, two weeks since Chris got hit and, um, you know, it has been very difficult, but God has met them, oh my goodness, all over the place. He's answered prayers, he has comforted, he has given answers. Uh, I believe that he's done some, you know, major and minor miracles in, um, in that hospital room. Uh, gotten several texts from uh, Rob saying, uh, last night I had the most amazing time with Jesus uh, in the middle of the night. Um, I've gotten several text messages like that from Rob. And, uh, you know, one, one time Rob and Eileen were in the garden at the hospital and they were, they were praying and Eileen just said, Lord, I'm, <laughs> I'm at the end here. This is, this is hard. I don't know what to think about all this. You know, the doctor just hit us in the gut with this prognosis that said his brain was beyond surgical repair. Um, we're just struggling. I need you, Lord. And uh, and God spoke to Eileen in that moment and said, "Put your hand out and stick it in the water." There was a there was a little rock memorial wall in the in the garden, and he. He told her, I want you to stick your hand um, and touch the water that's flowing uh, over the rock wall. And so she did, and she said that she almost felt electricity, you know, run right through that water and electrify her. She just felt it, you know, all over. And, uh, and then she felt like God was, told her, now go put your hand on Chris and pray over him. So she did. And um, and at that point, the doctor said, please don't talk to your son. Don't touch him. Whisper when you're around him. Uh, we need him perfectly calm, you know, so no touch, no. But, you know, they just said, hey, if God told me to touch him, I'm going to touch him. So they laid hands on him and prayed and felt the peace in their own hearts about it. And next day, the doctor came in and looked over MRIs and scans and all that kind of stuff and just said this is different he said now I'm not going to officially tell you you're out of the water he said but this brain looks way more active than it did the other day yesterday uh, either I saw it wrong or something's changed uh, of course the Pascals knew something had changed God continues just on every level to minister to them between books um, that people have shared with them, you know, excerpts in the books that have just blown their minds at how specific God is uh, in his themes, in his messages, and uh, the themes of his messages. Uh, one being Psalm 139, where he says, I knit you together, together in the womb. You know, you were fearfully and wonderfully made they've been praying that God would um, take his knitting needles once again and knit his brain together uh, and heal him. 
so that's the way they've been praying. And just several things have come up um, where that theme of knitting together, uh, Robin shared a book with them um, entitled The Grace of Catastrophe. And lo and behold, you know, there's an excerpt in that book that said God has, uh, God has his knitting needles uh, at work on the brain, on the neurons of the brain, that we would understand him and have a capacity to know him. Um, beautiful. So the Lord continues to, you know, even though they're not out of the water, he continues to minister to their needs. So God, God is good. And he has all these grace stories everywhere. For the eyes that are looking for him, and for the ears, and I, maybe that's why, well, I'm sure that's why Jesus said it. Uh, let he who has ears, let him hear. He who has eyes, let him see. For the one who's looking for the pattern of God's intricate plan and his hand moving in people's lives, you will see it. Uh, it'll be evident.